On the 26th of June 2009, XKCD released its 602nd comic, and my life hasn't been the same since. Let's look at it together. It features uh, a bunch of people at a party, and they're gossiping and gossiping, and the main character is zoning out and thinking about things. The other characters snap him out of it and ask him what happened, and he blames it on being tired. But what exactly was he thinking about when he was zoned out? What is going on here? What he did was he wrote down all the natural numbers, and then he wrote a square around each prime. Then he took each square and squished it so that it was as tall as the prime it represented. The box around 2 becomes 2 tall, the box around 3 becomes 3 tall, the box around 5 becomes 5 tall, and so on. This also makes the boxes narrower, so that the box around 2 became a half wide, the box around 3 become a third wide, the box around 5 became a fifth wide, and so on. And then he piled the boxes on top of each other, although I'm piling them next to one another here. And the point of all this is that you eventually reach infinity if you continue this. But it's really, really slow. For instance, I would need about 10 to the power of 190,000 primes to reach the end of the screen here. And this is what we're going to prove in this video. The main idea of this proof is as follows. We want to prove that the sum of the reciprocal of all the primes is infinite. And we will do so by contradiction. So we will assume the limit is finite. And with that assumption, we're going to conclude that some set of natural numbers, up to and including n, has fewer than n elements. And if that is not a contradiction, then I don't know what is. So if we assume the limit is finite, and that this finite sum is L, then we can split the sum into two parts. One for all the primes smaller than some k, and one for all the primes larger than some k. In such a way that the first sum takes us almost all the way up to L. In fact, it takes us to within one half of L. And the second sum, with all the rest of the primes, will take us the rest of the way. We shall call the primes in the first sum, the primes that are less than k, small primes. And the primes that are larger than k in the second sum, we shall call large primes. With the contradiction assumption out of the way, let's get into counting natural numbers. Pick some natural number n. Let capital N be the set of all natural numbers up to and including n. We will split this into two parts. The first part, ns, will consist of all numbers from n which have only small prime factors. And nl will consist of all the numbers that have at least one large prime factor. We will now estimate the sizes of these two sets. First, we shall estimate ns. Take some arbitrary number r in this set. It will have a prime factorization consisting of p1 to the power of e1 times p2 to the power of e2 times p3 to the power of e3 and so on, up to pk to the power of ek, where the p's are all the small primes and the exponents are non-negative integers. However, this isn't quite on a desirable form yet. So I will place a 1 here and I will extract a couple of factors into this one from all the prime powers. And specifically, I'm extracting perfect squares as much as possible, so that this factor x becomes the largest perfect square it can be, while everything here still remains integral. With this new square factor, each exponent must be either 0 or 1. And of course, since r is less than or equal to n, x squared must be less than or equal to n as well. And now we can start the combinatorics. How many possible numbers are, are there? Well, x squared has to be a square number less than n or equal to n. So x has to be a natural number less than or equal to the square root of n. And the exponents are either 0 or 1, and there are k of them. So there can at most be 2 to the power of k possible values for them. So how many possible values can r take? Sure, some combinations of x and ei makes r larger than n, and thus impossible. But clearly, the number of possible r values can't be more than 2 to the power of k times the square root of n. We will keep this in the corner for later. And now for the numbers in capital N with at least one large prime factor. Take any prime p, 
and the number of numbers in capital N that are divisible by this P will be N divided by P rounded down to the nearest integer. So how many numbers in capital N are divisible by at least one large prime? Well, we can add the contribution from every single large prime. This will possibly overestimate the number of numbers in capital NL, because the numbers that are divisible by several large primes will be counted several times. This is not a problem. So we get the sum over all the large primes of n divided by p rounded down to the nearest integer. And clearly, if we don't round down, the result can't be smaller. Now we can extract a factor n, and you recognize what's left here? This is exactly the definition of the large primes. This sum is less than a half. We will stick this in the corner together with our other estimation. And now we are ready to arrive at the conclusion. Using our estimates, n is less than or equal to 2 to the power of k times the square root of n plus n divided by 2. Now this is supposed to hold for every single n. So in particular, it should hold when n is equal to 2 to the power of 2k plus 4. Let's insert that into our estimate. Simplify away the square root, simplify the fraction, and pretty things up a little bit. These two terms can be multiplied together to give us 2 to the power of 2k plus 2. And now we would like to do this addition, but it's a little bit more difficult than it has to be because the exponents aren't equal. So we make them equal. This picks up another inequality sign. Now these two powers can be added together, and we get 2 times 2 to the power of 2k plus 3, which is also known as 2 to the power of 2k plus 4. But now if we look closely at this expression, and extract the most relevant parts, we can see that we have reached something that cannot be true. 2 to the power of 2k plus 4 cannot be strictly less than 2 to the power of 2k plus 4. We have reached a contradiction, and thus our initial assumption that the sum of the reciprocal of primes is finite must be false. This proof is due to the Hungarian mathematician Paul Erdős, and it is one of many elegant proofs by him and other mathematicians collected in the book Proofs from the Book, which is a fascinating read for anyone interested in elegant mathematical proofs. I highly recommend giving it a try.